Hi guys, PJ here. Today we're working on a 2003 Toyota Avensis and we will be installing a DAB radio. Now we've ordered a fitting kit in advance of this one and it's from a company called Connects 2 and there's your part numbers that you're going to need. So there's your plastic face sheet, your trim to make it all fit properly. There's your stock adapter interface lead and there's the larger part with the little little box of tricks there that makes all your steering controls work part number just there for you so if you've got a steering wheel like that with the little buttons on it and you want all that to work you are going to need these parts right without wasting any more time let's get on with taking the car apart and showing you how that's done okay to start with you're going to need our friend the plastic pry bar there device uh, these are made by Bojo, the particular ones I'm using. You can order these off eBay or wherever, simple enough. If not, a good solid plastic, plastic wallpaper scraper. Do not use metal, otherwise you will damage the trim on the vehicle. And all you've got to do is get it down the, the back of this. Go all the way along it, just lever it out a little bit. Not too difficult. Up to the air vents. Don't go any further than the air vent. There you go. And then you should... Able to pull, there you go. pull that out of there, and all the way along, click. There you go. You got a lug on the end there. That's why I was careful near the air vent because sometimes you can pull the front off the air vent and a little slats fall off. Bit of a pain if that happens. So pull that forward, and you've got a wiring connector on the back there. It's it's only for the the uh, passenger airbag light and the rear heated screen, etc. You can press the squeezy clip that's underneath it. Do this. I can never do this one handed on these videos. Alright, it's in well. Bear with me. Okay, we've turned it upside down basically so I can get to the little squeezy button there. So you just squeeze that in and pull. Comes out. You're then free to remove the cup holder part of the car. Put that out of the way safely. Next, you're going to work down at the uh, gear lever. This particular car and automatic, but manual is exactly the same, so there's no problem. Once again, our friend the plastic pry tool comes in handy. You just shove it down the edge. There you go, pop. That came out without even doing the other side. Nice and easy. Some are a bit more stubborn, but no big deal. Just lift that out. Now, being an automatic, I am just going to quickly have to flip the ignition on, put the lever all the way to the back there to be able to pull this out. On a manual, you won't have that problem. Just shift your gear lever over. So we'll just do that now. Okay, so gear lever all the way to the rear. Like I said earlier, just pull this out of the way. Yeah, there's a little connector on the back here for your cigarette lighter, which again is one of the squeeze clips, which I can never do one handed. So we'll go. I'll do one of these one handed one day. Yeah, bear with me. Let's just have a right, push the pin in. Oh, they are fiddly sometimes, these things. There you go, out it comes. You are then free to lift out this section okay so that's out of the way done now I will point out the plastics down the side here on these particular cars are incredibly easy to scratch I mean really really easy so um, you're going to want to cover them in tape or something and also get yourself some sort of foam pad pop down there just to cover the, uh, the surround from this because again you don't want any scratches on that you're going to see it afterwards because when you take the, the, the radio out, it's the entire centre comes out. It weighs quite a bit and it's all steel bracketry. So what's liable to happen is you're going to rest it on here and scratch it. I've seen this happen many, many times. And once you've done it, it's too late. So we'll just put some tape on now. Right, we're all taped up. It's just two or three layers. I've just put a little bit of electrical tape each side there, you know, just to, in case you catch it. Now, the main thing you're going to want to get to now is your actual mounting bolts to get this thing out. Now, they're all 10 mil. There you go. There's one underneath. Just loosen that off. There we go. Two. And the other two are tucked right under there. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So there's one. Just tight one. And another one on the other side. Take those out keep those safe if you think you're going to lose the bolts down the back which you probably will because they're, they're quite deep put a bit of electrical tape in the end of your socket yeah so stick it over it and then shove your socket over the bolt and what that'll do is just stop the bolt from tumbling down behind the back of the dashboard it'll come out on the end of the socket so i'm going to go ahead and do that now 
Okay, so with all four bolts removed, like I say, this is quite a weighty thing. Just sort of lift it up and out. And bear with me. I'm going to have to put the camera down for a sec, guys. Okay, so after pulling the whole thing forwards now, and you'll see why I've got the pad down, these metal things here, look, if these catch the edge, any of this catches this plastic, it will scratch, okay? All the connectors are on squeezy clips, so just pull them out. They are quite stubborn, I've actually loosened these already. And you've got two at the bottom for the heater as well. There we go, can you see those? There you go, just pop both of them, squeezy tabs, yeah? You then free to lift the whole lot away so you're left with a nice big hole in your dashboard and then you've got phillips crosshead screws to uh, remove the radio part and separate it from the heater part you'll notice that there's like a plastic uh, little clip system along here that you have to slide out and disconnect to, to remove it once you've took your screws out quite simple to do that it's no big deal okay so when you've got all your screws out from your side plate here you'll need to remove the two from the heater part as well as one here and one here and then four for the radio take that away so you've done both sides yeah and then uh, if you look at this piece the heater piece yeah turn it around there for you you'll notice it's got some little clamps underneath there well what you've got to do with this is slide it um, so basically you go across like that so yeah, it's locked in, shove it, shove it across. So literally, as I've got the radio in front of me with the back facing me, I've shoved it towards the passenger side of the car, yeah? So across and then out. Because it's on these little locating dowels, look, little lugs. There you go, slot system. Move that safely out of the way. And uh, we're ready now to fit the fascia and the new radio. Right, it's just worth noting uh, to line your new radio up with this. So you with, with your clamps that you've taken off the old radio, you've got your new plastic fascia trim, yeah, and you've locked it into the uh, the heater here. Get your side panels and put your heater screws in first, yeah? That lines the panel up with the radio. On your radio, your new radio, they come with a little plastic edge trim around the edge here. Um, best thing to do with that is click it on, the edge trim, yeah, you can see it there, look. Shove your radio in, not hard, because otherwise you'll pop the trim off again just so it's flush up to that trim. Then you know how deep to set your radio and you can put your two mounting screws in to hold it in place. Without the edge trim, you, you know, you might hit the wrong screw. It might be sticking out too far or sinking too far. And the actual mounting screws themselves, most decent quality radios come with a little bag full of them. You do not want deep ones. These are about as deep as you're gonna go. Any deeper than that and you're gonna go straight into the new radio. Uh, don't be tempted to try and use the bolts you took out the original one. They won't work, they will just mangle up inside the radio so you want some of these to come with it if not go to your local uh, you know little electrical place and go and buy a bag of them it's worthwhile much easier put all four of them in and then 